The Turbo CD was the first of its kind, tapping into the potential of CD technology. Thanks to it, a little known game and others got the chance to ride a wave of innovation, breaking down the barriers and opening new doors. Yi showed the world what it was capable of, and it didn't stop there. In 1991, Falcom decided to ride that wave one more time. Like Resident Evil 4, Wanderers from Yeez is more of a departure than a continuation of the series. Whatever you learned in the previous games, throw them out the window, because 3 is a whole new experience. It recently leaps away from the whole ramming Zelda-esque idea towards something more traditional. Well, traditionally familiar. It's one of the few RPGs of its kind to predate Symphony of the Night. So put down that Pepsi, you're gonna need two hands for this. Why Falcom changed the venue to hack and slash side scroller is anyone's guess. Maybe players couldn't wrap their heads around Yi's unique design, opting for a control scheme most players were comfortable with. But that doesn't make the game easy. Books 1 and 2 placed emphasis on strategy and timing, but 3 ups the ante putting emphasis on skill on top of everything else. Even at top level, knowing where and when to attack isn't enough, and charging in swords of blazing just won't cut it. Quick reflexes, a steady rhythm, and a keen eye prevail against these foes. Anything less is asking for trouble, and that goes double for bosses. There's automatic healing only outside the dungeon. At least the menu screen returns for boss fights, so there's some relief there. But now we celebrate. For the first time, Adel speaks. With... words? What? Wait a minute! How come everyone has a voice except him? Hell, the soldier lackey gets one, but not the hero? What kind of backwards logic is that? Maybe it's all for the best. I mean, looking at what's passed as voice acting over the last decade, I think it's better that all heroes remain silent and leave the rest to our imaginations. We've been doing it since childhood, so why stop now? Still, strange to give Adel a talking part with no voice, but not as bad as the other flaws this game has. First, the game is short. Too short. Counting grinding and boss fight repeats, the game clocks off around 6 hours. Too low compared to the 18 to 12 hours to complete 1 and 2. Sure, there's more dungeons, but the fact that it offers very little exploration or backtracking, plus having all treasure close to the beaten path, it suffers as an RPG that's too straightforward. Falcom realized this mistake. They created a remake called Oath in Falgana, with bigger dungeons, a grander story, and promising more hours of heroic fun. Or so I've heard. It never got a US date, but I'm still crossing my fingers for the PSP version. Also, the cover art kinda sucks compared to the first one. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here, and ignore some of the finer quality 3 offers. Like a great soundtrack, tight controls, and more surprisingly, it's fun! Yeah, the game's too bare and plays dirty sometimes. That's no reason it should be overlooked. A short ride, yes but a good short ride nonetheless. Believe it or not, Yeez 3 was released on not one, not two, oh you get the idea. In 1991, Wanderers from Yeez sailed to new frontiers, establishing itself on the three biggest systems at the time, the Turbo CD, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. Falcom hoped to capitalize on the success and attention 1 and 2 brought. They hoped their gamble would translate into bigger gains, so every port was created by a different developer. The Turbo version was made by Alpha System, and I want to make a quick note here. These same guys made 1 and 2 the amazing adventure that it is, so I'm giving credit where credit is due. Carrying on, the Genesis by Riot, 
a small subsidiary of Telenet, makers of the long forgotten Valus series. Finally, the Super NES version, built from the ground up by Falcom themselves, shows why it's graphically superior, but unexpectedly has the most issues and my least favorite. For one thing, it's too cheap! It unfairly punishes players for the silliest things. I mean, without warning, you take damage by walking by them while monsters hide in the background. Other times, they simply take a swipe by flying through the floor beneath your feet. Look at this! How am I supposed to avoid that without damage? Would it kill the developers to move them a few spaces away? I mean, it's something you could have corrected in the testing stage. Wait, now enemy projectiles can fly through the background? Okay, okay, how about this? We give every boss a nuke, so instead of fighting, they can blow up Adel, the village, kingdom, heaven, hell, all the way to kingdom come! Or better yet, how about Spock? Yeah, Spock! And why not? No one can beat Spock! Hell, if we have a video game with Spock as the only boss, no one can beat that! Why? Cause Spock is God! Piling onto the paint some more, wonky hit detection, endless regeneration trick, and a 50,000 gold necklace that doesn't revive me when I die. Without a doubt, the Super NES version is the hardest of the bunch. And Adol looks incredibly stupid. <laughs> Let's not forget how the music is wonderfully done, no matter what version you pick. All based on Mieko Ichikawa's work. Of course Turbo CD takes top billing, including animation, voice work, it's easier and better graphics than the Genesis. Sorry to say, Virtual Console doesn't have E3, so the Turbo CD Duo is your best bet. And as we all know... Donut wallets, not your thing? Then the Genesis is the money-friendly choice. And the Super Nintendo, for the little masochist in all of us. Joking aside, you really can't go wrong with any, despite their flaws. The Zelda 2 stint isn't every fan's cup of tea, yet it reminds us that change isn't bad or good. It's interesting. What you do with it counts, and Falcom did a good job. One thumb up. Well, two down, one to go. Next time, we double down and fast forward to the new millennium and see what the future brings. See ya! Wait, one more thing. I'd love to give a shout out to my pal, the Half Blind Gamer. For you lovers of the obscure, like the City Eye, check out his videos at his YouTube page. Fascinating stuff.